So today I am going to be testing out the difference between using a beauty blender on your face to apply your makeup and an oval brush. They cost around the same and they're both reusable a couple of times but which one is easier to use, which one is cleaner, which one spreads foundation better, and which one doesn't pick up as much, puts more on your face, all of that sort of thing. So this is my no makeup face. I'll be right back. I'm going to pause this video and come back when I've got my um, base primer and everything and I'm ready to test this foundation. So now I've got my eye makeup done and I'm going to put on my foundation using these oval brushes and sponge beauty blenders that I have here. And the oval ones are small, medium, and large. Here you can see we've got large, small, and medium differently shaped. So depending on the contours of your face would depend on what one you would use. So I'm actually just going to use these um, small purple ones here, not just because it matches my nails when they're cold, but because there's extra ones there, two extra ones, so I feel like I'm not using that much. They're really small. I want something small and we're just testing it. So let's see how that goes. Once I am done testing one half of my face with the uh, beauty blender and the other half with foundation seeing how it goes on with uh, my primer we're gonna see how it also goes on and blends with concealers cover-ups powders and all that so this is my go-to foundation it's Clinique and the reason is because it actually has an SPF of 15 in it so even though that's not a lot um, when I'm wearing makeup and I happen to be outside, it's usually not for very long, so it, it's enough for me. And when you're going from the taxi to the place that you're staying at or whatever it is, it's really important that you have everything covered. So the only downside to using a beauty blender instead of an oval brush is there's no obvious way to hold on to it. Do I hold it here on this little teardrop and use the flat part on my face? That seems to be working well. But now I can't really use that part because I've been, I've been touching it. I don't want to switch it around and get my fingers all dirty. The one plus side that I will say is that this is a lot faster at applying than an oval brush. It is a lot cleaner. There is not as much crap inside of here okay so we're blending we're blending I'm gonna finish and make it all nice and neat for you and now let's try an oval brush we're gonna use one of these small ones because we're just testing I've used these many times and they're a lot harder to clean than the um, beauty blender because things get deep within the bristles. The sponge doesn't take up as much. But when I'm applying it, I feel like I'm getting a nice, thick foundation so that my freckles and redness are actually covered. With the uh, beauty blender, I don't find that I'm really covering anything, that it's going on just too light. So what do you guys think if you're noticing a difference here as I'm coming into the light? It depends on whether you want something easy to hold, easy to blend, nice and thick, nice and light, whether you're going to throw it away or not, that, that little sponge, or are you going to use it again? I feel like there's an even sort of match and balance here with it mixing in with my primer and we'll see what's going to happen with the next stage. So I've got some of my go-to concealers and cover-ups here and I like to go cheap with this stuff because really it's, it's all the same, especially when you get a nice good BB cream. So Rimmel London has a really great one and they have ones that are matte and they have ones that, um, this is a matte. They also have 
these other ones and it's a nine in one. So it's hydrating, it's um, primer, it's protecting your skin, it's concealing, it's um, contouring. These are the same shade actually, but one of them's darker. So I usually actually would apply this just with my fingers like this and then spread it in. So let's see how that works using this beauty blender. Is it cleaner? Is it faster than when I would normally just use my finger? The effect. Seems to work just as well as using my finger, so it's probably better and much cleaner if you would want to use the oval brush to apply your foundation and then this to apply your BB creams and concealers that might honestly be the most ideal makeup routine that I'm now discovering and um, I wish I had bought these a long time ago they're heavy in the beauty community pretty much everybody uses them but I never did because I just thought they were kind of gross because they didn't have a handle and everything but this isn't so bad I'm actually looking all right. I'm a little pale on the face compared to the rest of my body. I've got a bit of a tan, haven't gotten a new sort of foundation. But one thing that you can do is setting spray all this and then put on a bit of a bronzer. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to wait. Setting spray, bronzer, see how it mixes with powders. Just wait. I have some of my go-to powders here with me that I was talking to you about. Um, in the shoppers, sort of cheap, affordable version, Fit Me, Maybelline. I've got my light shade here that's used in the winter and throughout the summer. I use this one to sort of darken it, 110 and 240. It's on my brush right now, so I'm putting it on the side where I use that beauty blender, the side that I'm not used to having it on, and honestly, it feels lighter airier easier to apply and like I'm not uh, messing around and moving foundation and BB creams and concealers out of their layers out of their place not like I felt like I was doing that before with one that I've been applied with the oval brush and my finger sort of technique but I have another one and I'm going to use it sort of on the top, see if I feel a difference. It's the Too Faced. Now, this one will leave your face smelling like chocolate. It is made out of the cocoa powder ingredients recipe. I mean, I would say this does feel lighter as well. And I think maybe the holes in the sponge create a lighter and airier application of your foundation versus the bristles of the brush or something like your finger or maybe anything else really unless they have something sort of spongier but let's try using it on the other side of my face as well and just make sure that I'm not feeling different or that it's not airier as well just today on the other side of my face. Well, it's definitely still light and airy, like still powder and, and foundation. I'm waiting on my Too Faced setting spray, setting spray, setting powder in the mail right now. So all I have is powder foundations, which I wouldn't normally use without um, the setting powder but alas this is what we have going all the way across I think it's just thicker on this side and on this side we've got a thin sort of light layer and the fact that they kind of look the same and feel the same when I'm putting them on and on my skin the only difference is when I'm kind of going at it with the powders I'm guessing that I could use less of my product when I'm using the sponge, it takes more of the product when I'm using the oval brush, both in the sponge and the brush, as well as on my face. And so you will save money if you are using the sponge after all, even though it costs the same as the brush. And 
if you're looking for something to just be convenient, nice, and easy, or you really want to cover redness, freckles, like myself, a lot of discoloration in my face, I'm actually going to go with the new beauty routine of using the oval brush for my foundation application, and then that sponge beauty blender for my concealers and BB creams and everything on top because it's a lot faster, easier, and cleaner and smoother than using my finger, and it works better for my powders and stuff like that. So, thank you for watching this beauty blog. I hope that you liked it. And if you want to see what the final face looks like, you can check out my Instagram, Kath's Photographs.